Confidence among U.S. single family home builders slipped in January, according to the National Association of Home Builders. After four months of increases, the index dipped one point to 83 this month. According to the report, higher material costs and shortages, adding several weeks onto construction of one typical single family home. As buyers and sellers make their way into the spring real estate season after a year of record home price growth and fierce market competition, what is ahead in 2022? A Vector Group CEO and Douglas Elliman Realty Executive Chairman Howard Lorber joins me in a Fox Business exclusive. Howard, it's great to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Let's talk rates. That's the big, big story right now for everybody that's looking to invest in real estate. We're talking at least four rate hikes from the Fed. Maybe it's five. Even a quarter of a point can lock out some well, home buyers. How many home well, buyers in this country are going to get knocked out, do you think, this year? Well, first of all, it may be three, four, or five, but it may also be three or two. You know, you really don't know. You know, they say one thing sometimes and do something else. But the good, th the good thing about uh, rate rise increases is that motivates people to jump into the market before they're priced out of the market. So once there are small rate heights, they're going to go into the market because they're just afraid it's going to keep going and then they'll be priced out. So what does that mean for prices? Because U.S. prices for 2021 jumped 19.1 percent. Yeah. And then well, I was looking well, at some estimates for this year that like from Realtor.com and Redfin, they're saying maybe 3 percent jump in prices for 2022. Where do you stand? Well, look, I, I think the luxury markets are different than, you know, than if you just look at the total price increases of, of everything. And we're primarily in luxury markets. And we think that those markets will continue to uh, outperform the rest of the market. So we're thinking more than 3%. Um, and if, if you look at what's going on, that it's not just interest rates. You know, we have inflation. So people know that there's inflation. They know real estate is going to be more expensive. New homes are going to be more expensive. Doing renovations of homes is going to be more expensive. That's going to push them into buying. And then with all the money coming into the economy from all the different programs. So I think there's a bunch of different reasons why the market is going to stay strong and continue. And I would predict more than a 3% increase across the board. Okay, so you mentioned luxury markets. I know here in New York City where I am, we saw bidding war after bidding war nationally. 72 per homes got multiple offers, okay? But in hot markets like New York and others that you cover, we, we've seen even more of a frenzied uh, buying uh, scenario. Does that continue this year? Yeah, I think, I think it continues this year. I mean, the big markets, you know, if you look at New York, we did more business in the fourth quarter of uh, this year of 2021 than we've done in 32 years, the best quarter in 32 years. That says a lot. And then if you look at uh, uh, South Florida um, prices, we've done we've done multiple sales over 90 million dollars, going up to 130 million dollars in the past year. And then in, in Palm Beach and Miami, multiple, multiple uh, tens of millions of dollars of houses, 40 million, 50 million, 60 million, 80 million. Uh, Aspen, 50 million, 60 million, 70 million. Hamptons. Uh, six, 50, 60 million, and we have one that we're working on, which should be reported pretty soon, uh, substantially higher than that. So if you stick looking at the luxury markets, um, they're very strong. A lot of wealth has been created. Uh, of course, a lot of uh, people have not done well during COVID, and we have to worry about that and be concerned about that. But the amount of wealth that has been created during COVID is just astronomical. Well, I think one of the things during COVID that we thought is once we started to get out of COVID, this is before Omicron came along. We were thinking that maybe a lot of those elderly owners would start to maybe put their homes on the market because then they were ready to go. But if they were kind of frozen at, at home, you know, seriously at home uh, during the pandemic. That leads me though to the question about inventory, because because right now you've got and this is a national number. I think we're 40 percent low or hold on 40 percent. Inventory right now, yeah, we're at a, like a 40 percent low for in inventory or something like that. We're just down in inventory. Yeah, but it's but as prices go up, that brings new inventory onto the market. Okay, That's what so happens. Prices go up and then the sellers come back in and then the buyers are there waiting. And all of a sudden you have more inventory to sell. OK. OK. All right. Well, we shall see. There's a lot of question marks about this year, but thank you for your insight and 
Like, you've got, what, $3 billion real estate teams under under Douglas Elliman. Pretty impressive, Howard. Howard yeah, Lorber. Yeah, we have three. We have three. Yeah. We have three. Some, uh, something you. else. Thank you, Howard Lorber.